Hello, welcome to my house and welcome to my channel. I'm Laura Cepeda and today I'm going to show you how you can make this poncho. We are going to use both techniques. We are going to use our needles and the hook to make the final rows to make this beautiful edge. You will see that in just few steps you will learn how to make this poncho. We are going to use few material also and I'm going to teach you how you can make it in different sizes. For now, I invite all of you to subscribe to my channel before we start the video. Remember that in each video, I'll give you the material list and the step-by-step. -step. But well, I don't want to lose more time. Please, uh, let's start with the class. Well, for this standard size poncho for an adult, we are going to need between 400 and 500 grams of this material. It's between light and medium and uh, round needles of number six. We are going to start with the short cable, but then while we are increased, we are going to use the longest cable, okay? And we are going to use a hook of number four. If you want to use the same materials that I use in all my videos, here I will share all the information where you can buy them. Remember that if you want to buy and use the same materials that I use in all my videos, you can visit my online store www.lauracepeda.es Well, with our needles and with one thread of the yarn, we are going to start casting on the stitches. We are going to start by the neck, we are going to cast on 120 stitches. Remember that this is the way that I teach you of how you can cast on the stitches. This, to me, this is the easiest way and also you are going to use less material, you will see. Well, once we have the 120 stitches in the circular middle, well, we are going to check that we didn't twist our project. The first row is very important, so we have to make sure that all the stitches are correctly, okay? Well, once we are sure, and we can make the simple uh, elastic or the double elastic. In this case, I'm going to make the double elastic. This means that I'm going to need two and four two. So this is how I'm going to continue for the rest of the row, knitting two and then pour two. Please make sure that you didn't twist at the end of the row. Well, here I am at the end of the row. I'm going to finish uh, with two pour and then I'm going to try to fix it. So I am going to make sure that I didn't twist through the row, so then I can continue. Well, I'm going to start always with knitting two and finish making two pour. So we have to check this. So as you see, I'm going to start knitting two. So I'm going to repeat as it goes, okay? I'm going to make this row where I pour, I'm going to pour, and where I knit, I'm going to knit. And remember that it's very important that you check that you didn't twist your project and that you have the same number of stitches. Here, I'm going to use this thread to make a knot here so I can join both parts. Well, we are going to continue with the elastic stitch. Where we pour, we are going to pour, and where we knit, we are going to knit. I'm going to make around 18 rows for the neck. See you at the end of these 18 rows. Well, look, here I have the 18 rows. You will count the rows like this. You have to open a little bit to count and to see exactly how many rows you have. I think that with this long, it's enough. But if you want to fold your neck, well, you have to make more rows if you want it. Well, now that I finished, I'm going to use my marker to point it out the first stitch and the half of these stitches. Remember that we cast on 120, so we are going to put a marker in the first stitch, and then we are going to count 59, and in the 60, we are going to put the other marker. Well, from here, we are going to start increasing some stitches. For now, I'm going to continue with the short cable, and while I feel that I need to change the cable, well, I'm going to use the longest cable, okay, to keep all my stitches together. Well, and this is how we are going to increase, okay? Here, I, here we are at the beginning. So now we are going to take this thread 
that we have here look and I'm going to twist the stitch a little bit to pass it through the other needle and I'm going to knit it then where is the marker I'm going to knit again and I'm going to increase again and I'm going to take this stitch and I'm going to twist it and I'm going to knit it so this means that we are going to increase one stitch before and after the marker and we are going to repeat the same in the other part where we have the marker we are going to increase one one before and one after the marker so we are going to increase two here and two in the other side so we will have at the end four but well I'm going to uh, do it again so look again so I want that everything is clear so you can see exactly how it is so here we are right at the beginning so I'm going to take this thread I'm going to twist it a little bit you see and I'm going to knit it again knit where is the marker and again look this is a trick we are going to take this stitch like this and place it as you see we twist a little bit so we are going to knit again so this is how we increase and while we increase in one side we are going to make it in the other side too and now we are going to continue knitting we are not going to pour anymore okay we are not going to continue with the elastic stitch we are going to knit and see you in the other marker look I'm going to stop here this is the stitch that we are going to make okay we are going to knit only and well now let me finish this part and see you where is the other marker well here we are in the other marker as you see before the marker we are going to increase we are going to take the stitch like this we are going to knit it then we are going to knit the stitch in the marker and again we are going to increase one after the marker like this we are going to knit and now let me see now we are going to put the needle behind and we are going to knit yes exactly like this and then we are going to continue with the rest of the uh, row okay we are going to continue knitting like this is how we are going to continue for more rows okay where we have to increase we are going to increase and for the rest we are going to continue knitting well look at this i already made some rows i want you to see how it looks and well after we continue remember that you have to change the cable i'm using the longest to keep all my stitches together to change it you just have to pull the needles a little bit and then you will uh, put the other cable and while you are uh, knitting well uh, you will use the cable okay it's it's very easy well remember that here's where I increase remember that I increase one stitch after or one stitch before uh, the half of the where I have the marker and I made the same in the other side if you count these small chains that we have here you have to count 50 there I'm going to stop to now continue with the hook well to continue with the hook I'm going to finish to increase uh, where I have to increase okay once I made this well I'm going to bind off the stitches like this I'm going to need two I'm going to come back with one then again take two knit them together and come back with one like this is how we are going to bind off all the stitches okay and then we are going to use the hook well try not to tie too much okay because it will lose its shape and we don't want that okay try to uh, lose a little bit and once we finish we will have something like this and here is where we are going to use our hook well so let's finish well look at the end we will have two stitches left we are going to bind off like this and we will finish only with one okay if you want as you could see here we have uh, like divided this part but don't worry you can use your needles or if you want 
you can use your hook to close this part. I don't know why this happened, but if you ever have something like this, well, you know how to fix it. So we are going to insert our hook like this and we are going to slip one and now we are closed, okay? We have the perfect base to start using the hook, okay? Well, now we are going to uh, use a different stitch with our hook. You Here in this part, you are open to make the stitch that you like. Remember that in previous videos, I have teach you to make different stitches. Well, you can choose some of, uh, of them. Uh, you can use the lips stitch or the um, puff stitch. In this case, I choose to make a different stitch that I haven't teach you. So look at this. Uh, remember that right here in the corner, we have to make more uh, a sequ the sequence uh, together because if we tie too much and if we separate too much our stitch, it will look like it's a spoon. So it will lose, uh, lose its shape, okay? But well, for now, we will go up with three chains and in the same space, we will make a double crochet after crochet. We will keep the last loops together. Okay, once we have these two double crochets, we are going to skip one. And we are going to insert our hook. Yes, right here, taking both parts of the chain. We are going to make one double crochet of three crochets. And we will keep the last loop in hold. The sequence of this stitch goes with three petals, but always at the beginning we are going to make of two petals, okay? Well, once we have the four loops in hold, we are going to bring them through, make one chain, and then we are going to make a double, three chains, then a double crochet of three crochets in the same stitch. And well, this will be the first petal. Well, then with the two loops in hold, we are going to insert our hook where we finish and right there we are going to make a double crochet and then a double crochet of three crochets when we have these four loops together well we are going to insert our hook right in the next stitch so we are going to skip one and there we are going to make the two double crochets of three crochets so now we have six loops in hold and we are going to bring them through, make one chain. And well, for now, we are going to make the three petals together, okay? Always. So this is the first part of the petal. This is the second part of the petal. And remember that here and here is where we are going to skip one in each part of the petal. And then in the rest, we are going to skip three spaces in between. We are making this because remember that this is the corner of the punch. And well, also here I'm going to only skip one, but in the rest we are going to skip two more, okay? So we will skip three. Okay, then we will go up with three chains, then in the same space we are going to make a double crochet, and then where we finish the last part of the lip, where there, right there we are going to make the next two double crochets and now here look we are going to skip three and in the fourth we are going to insert our hook and right here we are going to make the two double crochets of three crochets once we have the six loops in hold bring them through on one chain and like this is how we are going to continue remember that from here until here we are just going to skip one and then for the rest we are going to skip three and in the fourth we are going to insert our hook in each part of the uh, petals, okay? Remember always one, two, three, and in the fourth, we are going to insert our hook. Look, here I am right in the corner, and well, I'm going to count 10 stitches from here to here, and where I count 10, there I'm going to start skipping one stitch in between. Remember that we are making this because we don't want to make like a spoon shape right here in the corner. So look, I'm going to skip one, and in the next one, I'm going to make the other part of the petal. So well, remember that we are just going to continue with this with the sequence what we have make have been making before, and just in this part, in these ten stitches that we count from the corner to here, where we are going to escape only one 
a stick. And well, we are going to continue uh, until the tip of the corner and we are going to repeat the same in the other side, okay? So for now let's continue and well remember that we are going to repeat what we made in the other corner, okay? And we are going to repeat the same in this side. Count until 10. So well, we, here we are finishing the row and remember that here we are going to make the last part of the a petal and here in the corner we just escape one space remember and well so now we are just going to make the last part of the petal to join this petal with this one so we are going to close the row we are going to make three chains a double crochet in the same space we are going to insert our hook right here we are going to skip one. Well now to make the second part of the rows of petals well right here in the corner we are going to start with three chains and remember that we always start the row with the two parts of the petal just two double crochets and then we are going to go right to the next petal and here we are going to make the second part of the petal and this is how we are going to start okay once we have the four loops bring them through and close this is how we will always start well we are going to insert then here hook then in the other space so we are going to make a double crochet and in the same space double crochet we will keep the two uh, loops in hold then here we have two and the third part of the petal we are going to make it right here so now we have six loops in hole bring them through one chain and look as you could see here already form a flower you see so this is how we are going to continue so well this is how we are going to continue repeating sequence over sequence until we have three or four rows and with this we'll we finished okay see you at the end so well, as you could see, I just repeat the sequence. I made uh, five uh, rows and it will look something like this. If you want, you can make it longer or you can make less rows. Okay, it's up to you. And at the end, if you want, you can iron with plenty of steel. Remember that under the iron, you have to use a protection uh, because we don't want to burn our project. Okay, at the end, we are just going to hide these threads to all the project. You can use your hook or your embroidery needle. Well, so now let's see how it looks. Well, so what do you think? This is a poncho for an arrow in a standard size. Look at the color. I think it's so beautiful and very simple and you can use it always. If you like uh, to knit for yourself, well, it's something that you must have in your closet okay it's a classic poncho and so beautiful and easy remember that if you want to make it in a, a, a small size well i suggest that you make just a half of the stitches and you just continue with the sequence but it's important that before you start a project you always make a sample to take it as a reference and to see how many stitches you will need okay well i hope that you like it remember that if you like this video don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to share it. Remember that I have other social media where I share different content and pictures of my coming projects. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook and Pinterest. And please, well, remember that first I shared the video in Spanish in Laura Cepeda and there and then I shared it in English. If you want it in English, please let me know there in the comments the a video that you want me to make it in English. But well, uh, don't forget to give me a like and see you very soon in the coming videos. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.